Okay, so hello everyone. In this video, I will show you the complete method of performing a 45-6 tune-up using a filler gauge, this pre-stroke measuring tool, and this dial indicator. This is homemade, by the way, okay? Link of which is in the description below. Now, I know there's already a lot of videos out there with regard to this subject, but I feel most of those videos are only showing only half of the process. They only show you how to adjust the valve clearance, but they neglect to show you how to adjust the injection pump. So in this video, I will show you both. Now, if you really want to perform a complete tune-up, you need to have access on the crankshaft. And the only way to do that is to remove everything that is in the way. So first things first, disconnect the negative terminal. Remove the timing belt cover. Five bolts, one, two, three, four, and five. Remove the upper fan shroud, one bolt, one nut, same on the other side. Loosen the tension on the hydraulic pump, one here, one here, and one there, three bolts. Okay. Now loosen the tension on the alternator, two bolts, one here, and one nut there. Now remove the clutch fan for 10 millimeter bolts, okay? See? So now we have full access on the crankshaft bolt, 19 millimeter. And of course, we need to remove the valve cover. Now, there are two ways in which you can do this. The first is the method that is provided by the manual, and you can easily download this manual off the internet. Just type 456 manual on Google. And I'll show you the second method after I perform the first, okay? So before we even bother to consider rotating the crankshaft, make sure that the vehicle is not in gear. We can begin to rotate the crankshaft and align the timing mark on the crankshaft, okay, that's almost there, with the timing bar mark on the camshaft, okay, see that, aligned here, and the timing mark on the crankshaft pulley is aligned here, okay, T meaning top dead center. ATDC is meaning after top dead center. I'll explain that later. Okay, so perfectly aligned here and perfectly aligned here as well. Now, once that is done, according to the manual, we should make our adjustments on these rocker arms first, okay? This one, this one, this, and this. Now, this is the front of the engine. So, these first two rocker arms, skip one rocker arm and then these two. Now, the manual recommends a 0.15 clearance, but as far as I'm concerned, okay? And this is only based from my own experience, I always do it with only 0.10 mm, okay? However, once you learn how to do this, you can try 0.10 or 0.15 or 0.20, it's up to you, you can experiment. So, 12 millimeter wrench and a flathead screwdriver. So, we will start with this one, loosen this lock nut, 12 millimeter wrench, <clears throat> okay? Now take your filler gauge, slip it in between, okay? Let's check. Loosen it, loosen this lock nut some more. And then counterclockwise. So if you have to force it, force wedge it in between, then you have to redo your adjustment. Same thing if it's too loose, okay? Okay, so actually it's much better if you use your finger to turn this you can actually feel it more than just using a flathead screwdriver okay so slight drag but still smooth and that's what we want so i will leave the filler gauge in between there and now it's time to tighten it down now you use your standard flathead screwdriver to Tighten down the lock nut and as much as possible avoid the adjustment screw from turning along with the lock nut. Okay, let's confirm. Still good. Okay, so now we'll tighten it down. Okay, so. Confirm, slight drag but smooth, 
try to lift the rocker arm and there's no gap so that's good so now i'll perform adjustment on this this and this okay okay so i'm actually done with this adjustment this 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 and this now before we turn the crankshaft and turn our sights on this one and the last three let's first confirm our adjustments again like i've said slight drag but it should be smooth slight drag but it should be smooth and then slight drag but it should be smooth okay if you really have to wedge it in force it in then you have to redo your adjustment okay so next thing that we're going to do is to turn the crankshaft one complete rotation we're just going to focus our attention on the crankshaft okay and not on the camshaft so i'll turn it now Turn some more. We're almost there. Okay, a few more, and that's that. So if you notice, the crankshaft is aligned with this T top dead center, but the camshaft, the timing mark is on the other side. Okay, and that's what we want. So just one complete rotation. And now we'll turn our sights on this set of rocker arms. This one and these last three, okay? Okay, so just like the previous set, loosen the lock nut, okay? Loosen them all up first. And another tip, should you find it difficult to loosen the adjustment screw from the lock nut, as you can see, the adjustment screw is turning along with the lock nut and you find it difficult to have a grip on your screwdriver what i would suggest you do is something like this wherein you can insert another screwdriver this way you have a much more better grip okay so now insert the filler gauge again it's much easier to turn this by hand a much more better accurate way of doing this adjustment because you can really feel the clearance as well as the gap. Once we're satisfied with that, tighten the lock nut down. Okay? Tighten it by hand. And so like I said, this is where this thing comes in handy. Because it allows for a much more better grip. Tighten it down, check first, uh -huh, that I overdid that, okay, slight drop but smooth, leave it there, and tighten the lock nut down, check again, Okay, light drag but smooth. Now tighten it some more. Okay, so slight drag but smooth, and now perfect. So now we'll adjust the last three, performing the same procedure. Okay, last one. Okay, check. Perfect. Okay, so again, check your adjustment. Slight drag but smooth. Here, slight drag but smooth. Slight drag but smooth. Okay, and slight drag but smooth. Okay, so now I will show you the second method of performing this. Okay, so again, we will align the timing mark on the crankshaft pulley as well as on the camshaft sprocket one complete rotation okay we're almost there okay so perfectly aligned and also on the camshaft what you would want to do is count this number of cogs okay Say this is your timing mark, start here. So 
48 cokes. Divide 48 by 4, 48 divided by 4 is 12. So count the number of cogs with marker at the ready. Again, start here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. Now mark there, that's 12. Okay, again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mark here. Okay, 9, 10, 11, 12. So mark there. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then we reach there. Okay. So now with this method, okay, divided by 4, we can now adjust the valves for each cylinder corresponding to the firing order. Okay, so the firing order, combustion firing order is cylinder number 1, cylinder number 3, cylinder number four and then cylinder number two okay one three four two one three four two okay okay so now with the timing mark aligned and here as well we're at top dead center on cylinder number one now take your filler gauge and confirm your adjustments okay again again slight drag but smooth and if it's not then you can adjust these two for cylinder number one now if we turn the crankshaft and bring this timing mark here okay we're going to be a top dead center cylinder number three okay so turn 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 we're almost there and there now confirm clearance okay Confirm it with a filler gauge, slight drag but smooth. And this is for cylinder number three. Like I've said, one, three, four, two. Okay. Now next cylinder is cylinder number four. We'll bring this timing mark here. Okay. Okay, so check again here. There's clearance. Confirm it with your filler gauge. Slight drag but smooth. Slight drag but smooth. That is cylinder number four. And this for cylinder number two, okay? This two. So rotate the crankshaft. Okay. We're almost there. Okay, so check. There's clearance. Confirm it with your filler gauge. Slight drag but smooth. Slight drag but smooth. Now should we bring this timing mark here? that will revert back to cylinder number one. Okay, so turn, 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 turn. Okay, so cylinder number one. So, okay, again, one, three, four, two, okay? Now that is actually the second method of doing a tune-up without having to refer the on the manual however if you ask me i do both i first perform the tune-up with what the manual provides and then confirm it with the second method so that's it for the valve clearance adjustment now let's move our attention on this guy okay this fuel pump so the first thing that I'm going to do is to remove these fuel lines. Now, you don't actually have to do this, just loosen this four just to allow you to be able to tilt the fuel pump either clockwise or counterclockwise. But in this video, I will just remove this just to have more space and also in order to provide you with a much more better view. Okay, so 17 millimeter. Now at times you have to use a wrench 14 millimeter I do believe to counter the force when turning this because there are times this would turn along with this okay okay so all done it's a bit tricky just manipulate this wrench tilting it either this way and that way okay but it's doable if I can do it you can too now remove these four and 
actually even more easier. Okay, so take the fuel line out. We need to remove this plug, 12 millimeters. Okay, loosen the top and remove this by hand. Okay, so that's the copper washer. So the next thing that we'll do is to loosen the mounting nuts and bolts of this injection pump. There's one here and one on the other side. It's actually difficult to see. And two bolts there, okay? So I will start with the mounting nut on the other side. Difficult to get to 12 millimeter and an extension rod. So I'll just loosen that nut, okay? And this is why I prefer taking out the fuel lines in order to have more room to work with. So I'll make sure that the nut is loose enough, okay? Okay. Then I'll loosen these two bolts. Okay, one here and one right next to it. Okay. And this one, I'll keep it tight. I won't loosen this just yet, okay? Okay, so once that, that is done, if your fuel pump has an idle up assembly, just like on this manual, make sure that that is disengaged, okay? So I just downloaded this manual online. Just type 456 fuel system and you will find this with no problem, okay? Now this manual is not only for 456, for, for M40 as well and others more, okay? Mitsubishi. And this is the one thing that I like about Mitsubishi. Uh, manuals are readily accessible. Engine manuals, fuel system manuals, transmission manuals, etc. So before we proceed, let's familiarize ourselves with some acronyms. TDC, BTDC, ATDC. TDC means top dead center, meaning the piston is at the highest point of its travel inside the cylinder, top dead center. And BTDC means before top dead center, ATDC is after top dead center. Before top dead center, meaning the piston is on its way up towards top dead center. That is BTDC. Then once you reach here, that is TDC, top dead center. And once the piston is on its way down again, that is after top dead. So what we are actually aiming to do in adjusting this fuel pump in either tilting it clockwise or counterclockwise is that we want the diesel to be introduced inside the engine exactly 7 degrees after top dead center. And this is where we have to refer to the manual as to which degree it is we have to follow. Either 7 degrees or 9 degrees, okay? Depending upon the cylinder head. Because although all 456 are all generally the same, but there are slight differences, okay? Depending whether if it's a non-turbo or a turbo diesel or a turbo or turbo intercooled diesel. So what you want to do is to look on your cylinder head and see the marking so in this case it's b refer on the manual if it's a b so seven degrees after top dead center so before i actually show you how to use this and make our adjustments let me first explain to you briefly what we aim to do okay when we have this measuring tool screwed inside there what we actually intend to measure is inside that hole is a plunger Something like this. Well, actually not really something like this, but just use your imagination, okay? A plunger. So the plunger inside there has a pumping motion. And not only does it pumps, it also rotates as it pumps or plunges. And the plunger inside there has a groove or a keyway. So as it pumps, it rotates and it delivers that fuel corresponding to each cylinder okay so this is for cylinder number one cylinder number three cylinder number four and cylinder number two okay so like i've said the firing order is one three four two but we'll only need to measure it on cylinder number one okay and the rest will follow 
once we have this inserted in our fuel pump what we are actually measuring with this is the depth of travel of the plunger okay something like that it would move like that relative to seven degrees after top dead center as we rotate the crankshaft okay now let me show you how this dial indicator work okay if you push this the indicator will move now just know that one complete rotation on this dial is equivalent to one millimeter and one millimeter is only this okay one millimeter divided by 100 hence you have 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.03 all the way to point somewhere like somewhere here okay 0.99 and then one millimeter and then if you go over that that's when you'll have a reading of 1.02 in this case 1.06 1.011 okay something like that and this dial indicator you can turn this dial and rightly so because once you insert this dial indicator on your pre-stroke measuring tool it allows you to set to zero okay so and then if you push this rod here and that's how it works okay the standard value that we're looking for is 0 0.97 between 0 0.97 and 1.03 meaning as we have this inserted in our fuel pump as we turn the crankshaft relative to 7 degrees after top dead center we should only have a value between okay hold on between somewhere here okay 97 and 103 this is actually very sensitive okay 103 there and 0.97 here okay we should only have that travel so according to this manual we need to set the notch on the crankshaft pulley 30 degrees before top dead center and actually uh doing this method is quite tedious i'll show you mine and it's much easier okay so what i will do now is to insert this pre-stroke measuring tool on our pump but first make sure that the push rod moves about freely and it does so screw that in okay then i will tighten it's not not too much just enough that the measuring tool won't move so now before we insert the dial indicator make sure that the timing mark on the crankshaft is exactly at top dead center as well as the camshaft is perfectly aligned indicating that we're at top dead center cylinder number one so i will now insert the dial indicator in our pre-stroke tool and as i do i will make sure that it will be depressed and turn at least one complete rotation more or less okay doesn't have to be really accurate Okay, I'll now clamp that down. Okay, now that that is done, we will now have to find the 30 degrees before top dead center. So we need to turn the crankshaft counterclockwise from top dead center and pay attention on the dial indicator until it stops moving. So I will turn the crankshaft now counterclockwise and as soon as the indicator stops moving, that will tell us that we have already reached 30 degrees approximately before top dead center so that is no longer moving so what i will now do is to turn the dial and set the zero towards the arrow of the indicator and so once that is done what i will do now is to bring this timing mark and turn the crankshaft clockwise and bring the timing mark towards 7 degrees 80 DC after top dead center so I will turn the crankshaft now clockwise and bring it towards 7 degrees after top dead center and we will watch the value that we get on the dial indicator okay almost 7 degrees and I will stop there so as we have seen the indicator move more than one complete rotation towards here that means one point 31 okay and that is more than the standard value because it should only be between 0.97 and 1.03 mm so because the value we get is higher than the standard value we need to tilt the injection pump 
clockwise okay if it's lower then counterclockwise so this is when I will loosen this nut in order for us to tilt the injection pump okay now I will tilt the injection pump clockwise and I will stop until this arrow reaches zero okay meaning exactly one millimeter the standard value is 0.97 to point uh, one uh, 1.03 so I will just center that and bring it to exactly one millimeter mm -hmm. okay there almost okay there with that done I will now tighten this nut back up again okay okay and we will complete the process and confirm our results so I'll bring this back up again to top dead center okay top dead center our indicator already moved I will turn the crankshaft counterclockwise again until it completely stops moving and it stops on zero if the adjustment we made is correct should we turn the crankshaft clockwise again and bring it to 7 degrees after top dead center so should I turn the crankshaft clockwise now towards 7 degrees after top dead center we should have a value of exactly one millimeter or one complete rotation okay we're almost seven degrees and that's that and as you can see dead on zero okay so exactly at seven degrees 80 dc one complete rotation meaning exactly one millimeter so that's in between the standard value of 0.97 mm and 1.03 mm before we remove the measuring tool lock all the mounting nuts and bolts down i'll tighten it some more here i'll tighten the two bolts here okay one here and the other one beside it so fortunately the indicator still has not moved so now we'll tighten the one that's here okay we'll tighten it down be careful not to hit the indicator okay so before we remove this and put everything back in place we will perform one final confirmation so we will rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise okay until the indicator stops moving and it should stop moving exactly at zero and voila now should we rotate again the crankshaft clockwise and bring it to seven degrees after top dead center we should again see a reading of exactly zero meaning one complete rotation and voila so seven degrees exactly so now our adjustment is complete we can now remove the dial indicator as well as the pre-stroke measuring tool don't forget to put the plug back on and of course everything back in place now everything is almost back in place but i just want to let you know that before putting back on your bulb cover you don't actually have to apply silicone sealant on here i actually do not understand why i see some people putting silicone sealant on here because this is actually already a rubber gasket okay so what you just want to do is just clean this wipe this off and clean and wipe it off here as well okay and before you put this back on just apply a little bit of oil on that rubber seal all around okay now install the valve cover back okay and when it comes to tightening down this bolt don't overdo it stop right there when you feel that it's already compressed the rubber seal on the valve cover okay okay just like that so timing belt cover is now back on before we reconnect the battery and start our engine so i will bleed the air out from here as well as here and i've already shown how to do that on my video 
456 hard start problem link of which is in the description below once the air has been bled out of here as well as here i will again loosen these lines on these diesel injectors okay just a little bit you can now reconnect the battery perform a final walk around make sure that you did not leave any tool or make sure that you have reconnected or reinstalled everything completely and i will crank the engine until i see diesel oozing out of these lines have seen diesel has now flowed out of the out of each of these fuel lines towards each injector we can now tighten them all down okay so now all the fuel lines are now back tight and our engine should start however if it doesn't just repeat the process and it should start eventually So questions, when do you want to perform this procedure? Well, one is if you notice your engine no longer performs as smooth as it used to. Like say for example, it's already loud, especially if you cover the intake, produces a poop, 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 noise, something like that. Now, in that regard, as the driver, owner of your own vehicle, you would be the better judge of that. Number two is you would want to do a tune up whenever you perform any procedure that's going to move either the camshaft the injector pump or the crankshaft the fuel injectors or the fuel pump okay or replacing the timing belts the balancer belts anything of that sort anytime you do that you do a tune-up number three is if you notice your engine constantly having a hard start problem and number four is if you notice your vehicle producing a lot of white smoke and hopefully someday i will do a video with regard to white smoke problem okay so before i will end this video i would just like to say it's good to follow the manual and what it provides. However, don't confine yourself solely on this, okay? Don't be too bookish about it. As you've seen earlier, even though the manual provides that the clearance should be 0.15 mm, but I only did it with only 0.10 mm. Because as far as I'm concerned, based from my own experience, this engine works better, works smoothly with only 0.10 mm clearance, and it works more quieter. And I suppose the same would apply on the injection pump. You can try 7 degrees 80 DC, 4 degrees 80 DC, 10 degrees 80 DC, 9 degrees 80 DC. And you can even try adjusting this by tilting this counterclockwise or clockwise while the engine is running and see how it sounds, how it performs. Like I've said this, don't be too bookish about doing this. Because what if after doing everything by the book and your engine still performs poorly? What do you do then? Will you still insist on doing the same process, doing everything by the book again? You see, the point that I'm simply trying to make is try and try until you succeed. But every time you try, make sure that you try something different. Because if you'll only keep doing what you have always been doing, then you will always end up with the same result. As the saying goes, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So all in all, I do believe that's it. I apologize if this video is too long, but I hope you found it informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, like, share, subscribe if you want to. Only if you want to. And as always, thank you for watching.